Uh, last lecture, we explain uh, how to find the equivalent circuit for series resistance and how to find the, the equivalent circuit for parallel circuits. Uh, also, uh, we reviewed voltage divider and uh, current divider. Let's have uh, one example for uh, a circuit that has uh, resistances connected in series and parallel. Uh, well, in this question, when you look at this question, they ask about the total resistance uh, on this side. When you work problem like that, you go to the other side. You don't start from where they ask. They ask, find the total resistance on this side. No, you go from the end. From this resistance 5.6 kilo ohm. And you start to reduce the, the network step by step. You just try to figure out if the resistance are in parallel and series. I think the best thing to do, you just finish the series first. So when you go for this network, you'll find 5.6 kilo ohm is connected to the resistance 3.3 .3 kilo ohm. Do you think in series or in parallel? Is it connected in series or in parallel? These two resistance, 5.6, 3.3. What do you think? Yes. Series, why? Because if you assume electric current going through 3.3 .3 kilo ohm, the current will also flow in 5.6 kilo ohm. The current will not be divided. Since the current is not divided, so these two resistances are connected in series. So the first thing I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to uh, reduce uh, these two connected resistance into one resistance connected in series by adding them. So I will just put one resistance here. And this resistance, 3.3 uh, plus 5.6 kilo ohm. So you have 9 point, so 8.9 kilo ohm. So I put here 8.9 kilo ohm. And I, I complete the network. Uh, if you, this is the point, if you call it, for example, A and B. So between A and B, I have uh, 8.9 kilo ohm, and then I got another one. Just let me make the same thing. So you have another resistance, 4.7 kilo ohm, and you have one. 0.2 kilo ohm, and the last one, 5.1 kilo ohm. Now, still, I, I, I want to find the total resistance on the side, but I work from the other side as well. So now you have two resistance, 8.9 kilo ohm and 4.7 kilo ohm. I ask myself, are you connected in series or in parallel? I check the current. I said, I assume if, yeah, if there is a current, Going in this direction, just to get pick another color here. If we have current going in this direction, so what happened at this node? The current will be divided into two currents, right? So since the current is uh, is divided between the two resistors, eight point nine kilo ohm and four point seven kilo ohm, so these two resistances are connected in parallel. So I will try to find the equivalent circuit for this, these two circuits, I mean, these two resistance. Since they are connected in parallel, you apply uh, the formula that you know that one over R will be equal one over R1, which is equal 4.7 plus 1.8.9. But, but because uh, these two resistance only, uh, they are two resistance, so I can use the other formula directly, I see R is equal to the product of both 4.7 kilo ohm times 8.9 kilo ohm 
and divided by the sum. That will give me the equivalent circuit for these two uh, resistors. 4.7 times 8.9 equal and then divided by 4.7 plus 8.9. Then uh, I get 0.458 kilo ohm. I'll just review the answer. I'll review the, the, this final answer again to make sure that's correct before I continue. Because if I do one single mistake, uh, the rest of the run will be wrong. Plus 8.9. You see, I got different ones. See, did, did anybody check? Uh, so I got three point zero seven six kilo ohm. So that's the equivalent uh, resistance of the parallel. So I will remove these two uh, resistance four point seven. Uh, and eight point nine kilo ohm. This combination, and I will have. Instead, one resistance three point zero seven six. So that will be the equivalent. Three point zero seven six, and I will complete the circuit. I have only the resistance one point one point two kilo ohm, and another one that's. 5.1 kilo. I still need to find the total resistance on the side. So again, I, I, I try to think about what is the relationship between this resistance and this resistance. Obviously, these two resistance are connected in series because the same current flow in both resistance. So I will find the total resistance uh, by adding them, so I will have 1.2 plus 3.076. I get the equivalent result, 1.2 plus 3.076. That will give 4.276 kilo ohm. That's uh, the equivalent resistance of these two resistors uh, connected in uh, series. So I replace 1.2 kilo ohm and 3.076 kilo ohm by this value. So I have one resistor, 4.276 kilo ohm. And it's connected, if, if you call these two terminals, let's call them, for example, CD. So if you have CD, and you want to find the total resistance from here, I, I got to have 5.1 kilo ohm across this term. Looking at, at these two resistance, uh, if you assume current going in this direction, so it will split into two Currents in each resistance. So I understand that these two resistances are connected in parallel. How to find the equivalent circuit of two parallel resistance? I will use the same form I used before. And this time it will be the total. I don't have anything else. So R will be equal 5.1 times 4.276 divided by the sum of both resistance 5.1 plus 4.76 that will give it one times 4.276 divided by 5.1 plus 4.276 bracket equal, I get 
three, two, six kilo ohm. So that's the equivalent resistance of the whole uh, network. So you just can replace the whole network here by only one resistor. So the, the technique is really simple. When they ask about the equivalent resistor at two tunnels, you go from the other side and start to reduce. If you have any series uh, resistance, uh, find they are equivalent. And then after that, start to look uh, if they are parallel, reduce it in series, parallel, and so on. You, you just work backwards in uh, this type of problem. So, do you have any question on this problem? The, the last step? No, the first. The first, yeah, that's, that's the first. Yeah, that's the first. Yeah, yeah. This will be published as I did the first lecture PDF, PDF from the, the whole thing. Notice you put three terminals, you only use, you didn't use the 5.1. Oh, so you're making that one. Okay. Uh, when, when, when they ask about the fine, that's important. The question here to find the equivalent resistance uh, from this side, let's just call this side CD. You work from the other side, you reduce from the side, not from the side that they ask. So, uh, I, the, uh, simply, I have a 3.3 .3 kilo ohm and 5.6 kilo ohm. They are connected in series because the same current flow in both resistances. And then I reduce 3.3 .3 kilo ohm, 5.6 kilo ohm. I found it's equal to 8.9 kilo ohm. Then when I go backward again, I found that 8.9 kilo ohm and 4.7 kilo ohm. Uh, these two resistances are connected in parallel because the current is divided between them. I find the equivalent resistor. I found Z equal to 3.076. Again, I find it's connected in series with 1.2 kilo ohm because the current is not divided. I find it's equivalent series. That's 4.276. Then in the end, I find just I have to parallel resistor. I find the equivalent. So, so it's simple just when you go backward. Series and parallel, finish with any, any series and then start continuing backwards from uh, right to left. So that will be the equivalent circuit. So now we're going to uh, move to an important, it's still we're making revision because I know you had uh, this kind of problems in uh, EL100 series, parallel series, parallel, and Kirchhoff. So to be today, this last uh, the, the, the last uh, lecture to revise uh, uh, this kind of tools uh, used to solve uh, electric circuit, then we'll start to use uh, uh, different theorems and uh, methods. But it's important to understand uh, how Kirchhoff's uh, voltage law uh, work to help you in, um, in the next lecture. So I have an example here that it has uh, many sources. I have three voltage source, I have six voltage, and I have four voltage, I have two voltage, and the polarity is given in a random way. You have three resistors, two ohm, four ohm, two ohm, and the current was not given. I just uh, assume the direction of current I1, I2, I3, and I will tell you now how you assume the current. The question in general, so in circuit like that, find the current and the voltage in every element. Uh, so I want to find the current in this resistor, in, in, in 4 ohm, 2 ohm, 2 and 2 ohm. I want to find uh, the voltage across each resistor. So I just solve, uh, usually a problem like that is solve the circuits. Solve the exit. So what is the technique? Remember that I told you before, I1, I2, I3 was not given, you assumed. But let's see how we assume. 
For example, you have here uh, this branch, you have uh, the voltage source six volt and the resistance R1. So you assume any current uh, flows in, 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 in both because it, it does not divide it, right? So you can say that the current in this direction and you call it I1, or you can say in this direction, doesn't matter. Whatever direction you choose, it's correct. For this branch in the middle, you have two ohm connected in series with four voltage. You assume any current going through that. All right. So I'm trying to say, you don't say assume current in two ohm, I, for example, I1 and in the voltage I2. No, you cannot assume two different numbers in one branch because they are connected in series. So the rule, any connected elements assume one current for this element. So two ohm, Six volts connected series, assume I1. Clockwise, anti-clockwise direction, it doesn't matter. You have two ohm and four volts connected together, assume the current I2, make it, for example, upward. I just choose the direction random. And then you have uh, four ohm connected to two voltages in series, so assume any current. I assume it's equal I3 and in uh, clockwise direction. So that's the first step. So what the first step? assume electric current in every element but the elements connected in series they should have the same current all right so what is the second step the second step that you want to apply kirchhoff voltage law in each uh, loop that you have Well, we want to agree about something. We'll agree about notation, so you can do this problem correctly. First, we'll say that if we have any resistor, any resistor, and the current going in this direction, call it I, and this is the resistor, it will cause a voltage drop, positive and negative. So the current will be entering the resistance, it will make positive velocity and leaving from the negative. We should agree about. So the voltage here across the resistance will be equal to the resistance times the current. So the first thing we assume the current direction in every element. Secondly, you find the polarity of the voltage. So according to this rule, I1 is going in this direction in the resistor, right? So if I1 going in this direction, so it will make this one positive and this negative. Let's look for I2. I2 is going uh, upward. So it's going like that, right? So it, when it go from, from the bottom here to the top, it will make this positive and this negative. When you look at the resistance R3, the current in this direction, I, I3, so I3 going in this direction, enter the positive and leave from the negative. That's how you mark the polarity of each. It's very easy, but it's very, very important. You be careful because if we mess up in just one element, the whole problem will be wrong because I will, it will just, uh, you will see it's just everything uh, depend on. Uh, on other steps. Uh, what about uh, the, the voltage source? Does it matter? Just uh, because the, the current going, it's important to define the polarity of the voltage drop across every resistance. But the polarity of the voltage source already given. You can change it, right? Okay. How you apply volt, uh, Kirchhoff voltage law? Kirchhoff voltage law. Uh, says that the sum of the voltage across uh, in any loop is equal to zero, right? It's easy when I was telling it's easy just to state uh, a rule or law like that, but when we apply it, then we start to say, well, how it's equal to zero. Well, let's just uh, show you some. Um, if you have something like that, I will show you just one uh, loop. This is loop. 
and call this, for example, R1, call this R2, E1, E2, and let's say that the current uh, here is I1, I took this like part of a, of, of a circuit, so maybe you can see that uh, maybe the current in this one direction called I2. So that will be the voltage drop. And call this R3 and say that the current in this one is I1, for example. So you have something like that. There's the rest of the circuit uh, where I, I just uh, make this one. I don't care what what is what is here. I don't care. I just I'm 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 applying Kirchhoff Volts law in this loop that I have it here. But the rest, let's just make it different color here. This is connected to uh, from these two points to other things. I don't care what I'm connected to other elements. I don't care. But just. I'm focused on this loop in blue. So how you apply? Okay. You choose the direction you're going to move. What do you mean? I mean that uh, you have E1, you have E2, choose any source. And you say, this is your reference. So I'll say E1 is my reference. All right. And that's the positive and that's the negative. If even you don't have resistors or voltage, and if I ask you, if you have, last time uh, uh, we have like when we connect uh, batteries like that, let's say just you have batteries. And call this E1, E2, E3, E4. Can you apply Kirchhoff's law in this simple circuit? It doesn't have resistance, just batteries. All right. And you know that the sum of the voltage should be equal to zero according to Kirchhoff's law. So how you apply that? As I told you, choose one reference, any one of this voltage reference. It's used, I like that. I choose E4. All right. So that's my reference. So and start moving from its positive like that and see what's happening. So this positive connected to the positive, so you are adding or subtracting the battery. Subtracting, right? So I would say E4, I choose its reference. I bought it as it is. If it's 40, 60 volts, whatever, I put the value of positive. And then I start to move from the positive here. And I'll say this positive connected to the positive, so it's subtracting, right? So minus E1. When I move, then I, I, uh, the positive will meet positive again. So it will be minus. The positive, when I move, it will uh, 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 face positive. Let me just make this a change here so we can may have the, something different. Let's say that was like that. So when you are moving clockwise, and then you reach uh, E3, you'll find that the positive here connected to the negative. So it will be a positive, E3 equals zero. So that's how you apply voltage law. You just pick any voltage source and you say, okay, this is my reference. This I'm going to take it uh, and start to move in one direction. One direction, you can move clockwise or anti-clockwise, but uh, it's just like uh, a habit to me that I, I like to start from the positive and see my positive polarity of this voltage source connected to what? So simple, if your voltage source, that's your reference, Call it E star, for example. If it's connected to a positive, call it, for example, uh, e, 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 e. So you, you will say E star, positive connected to positive, will be minus E will be equal to zero. If, of course, this is the loop. If your reference connected to a negative, it's even when you look at it, it's, it makes sense. You are going to add. So E reference plus E will be equal to zero. It's just simple like this, okay? Now, uh, 
let's go to the circuit here that I just bought the loop here. Well, before you do the Kirchhoff voltage law, what is the voltage across R1? It's R1 times I1, right? What's the voltage across R2? I2, R2. What's the across R3? I3 uh, times R3. Okay. Now, apply the voltage law. I will take this reference. That's my reference. So I'll put like that. I'll say E1. That's my reference. Then I start move in the direction of the, my positive polarity. Is it a rule? No, you can move in a different direction. It's just, it's a habit for me. I like to move from my positive and I see the positive. If the positive connected to the positive, I subtract. Positive connected, if I add, just since I was sitting, I, I used to this system. You can do the opposite, you'll be fine. But you will be consistent. So the positive, I move here, positive is connected to positive or negative? Huh. Positive, right? So you see minus. And what's the voltage across R1? R1, I1. I finished this one. Let's move, uh, move to the R2. The positive connected to positive or negative? Negative. I add or subtract? Add plus. What is the voltage across R2? R2, I2. Now, I finish this R2. I go to the ele other element, E2. Is the positive reference connected to positive or negative? Positive. So I say minus. E2. The last element, R3, I'm still moving in this direction, okay? Still. So the positive is connected to what? Positive. So be minus. R3, I3. I'm done with the, the big complicated uh, loop. Let's go to our problem now. The example here, uh, let's apply Kirchhoff uh, Volch law. We're going to apply it twice in these two loops. So, Okay. How many loops do we have? Two loops, right? Two independent loops. That's one loop. And that's another loop. You can say there's the third loop, but the third loop is dependent. If you make the equation of the third one, because the, 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 the big one includes both. So you are going to repeat the equation. So it's not good. You break this one and this one. Big any two, the other two. So let me write the equation of this loop together. Which, what loop I'm going to write the equation for? A, B, C, D. So for the loop, A, B, C, D. Big the reference. In this loop, you got two volt source E1, E2. You can pick any reference, you know, even doesn't exist, but it's just better to, to choose something here. All right. Maybe you have one, maybe you will face one loop doesn't have voltage source, okay, but choose to say, I'm, I'm going to have my positive polarity at the top and the negative on the bottom, and you continue. So E1, that's the positive, that's the negative, and I'm going to use this one as my reference. So I will say E1, which is equal six volt. Let me just write the, value. So I have six voltage. Then I move uh, uh, in this direction. So I find that the positive connect to the positive. I say minus or, uh, or plus. Minus. Minus what? The voltage across to ohm. What's the voltage across to ohm? It's, it's two ohm times the current. Two ohm. What is the value of the current in R1? Already assume I1 in this loop. So I1 is it's the current. So I say two I1. So that's the voltage across to ohm. If you don't understand one step I'm writing, you got to interrupt saying, no, I don't know how you write this, okay? Because it's hard to go back from the beginning. So you stop them. So when you move, I'm moving, I, I, I'm moving in the same loop. 
uh, here, I finish this one, I go to this element. The positive uh, polarity of the six voltage is connected to the negative. So I add or subtract. And I want somebody to answer me, okay? Add or subtract? When positive connect to negative? No, so no, no. Uh, again, let, uh, let me remind you that uh, this is two batteries. Remember two batteries. If you if the if the positive connect to negative, the voltage are adding, right? If you have two batteries, you connect positive to negative, positive, negative, you are adding the voltage. But when you have positive facing positive, you will subtract. So when they are similar, subtract. When they are different, add. So uh, let me do it, do it again. In this loop, six volts, that's the positive. When I move, the positive is connected to what? Positive. The same polarity. I what I do? Subtract. When I move to the other element, so I find this positive is connected to what? To the negative. They are different. So what's about to do? I add or subtract. Add. When they are different, we add. When are similar, we subtract. So I add. I add what? The voltage across R2. What's the voltage across R2? It's the resistance times the current. Two times I. What is the current here? I2, right? I, I2, this is I2. That's I2. So I say plus two I2. Did I finish yet the loop? Let me see. No, I still have this voltage in the loop because I'm working in this loop. Again, this loop A, B, C, D, A. So A2, A2, that's the positive, right? So go back again. When you positive and you are moving, you are going to connect positive to positive. Are you adding or subtracting? Subtract because they are the same polarity. So you will say minus E2. What's E2? Four voltage. It should be equal zero. So that's the right equation, but you got to rewrite this equation in a way, the old variables on one side and the constants on the other side. So the left-hand side will have the variable. So minus two I1 plus two I2 is equal what? You move six to the other direction, negative six, and, uh, and, and, and negative four will be positive four. It will be negative two. So the first equation minus two I1 plus two I2 is equal to negative two. That's your first equation. Any question in this one before we go to the second loop? Okay, let's do the second loop. Uh, it will be good practice. So, second loop, uh, it's a uh, loop. C, E, F, D, E. Do you see uh, I'm tracing the second loop? It's closed loop, right? That second one to, to the right. So let me call it C, D, I'm sorry, C, E, F, D. All right. Choose your reference. I want somebody to choose the reference for in this loop. You got many. You got many voltage that you can choose uh, as a reference. You can choose four voltage or the voltage across two ohm or across four ohm or, across, or two voltage. Which one are you going to choose? Four. All right. So let me just mark this one. That's the reference. What is the positive of this one? Here. What is the rule? I want. I want to hear you. That, that uh, you you still remember the rule. What's the rule when we move clockwise direction? If if positive connect to positive, you are adding or subtracting. Positive connect to positive. When they are the same, subtract. When they are different, well, just flip it. All right. Let's do, let's do it together. Now I write four. All right. I start my reference. Now we go. When you go in this direction. I'm going this direction. So is positive connected to positive or negative? Positive connected to positive, right? The first thing I face positive. So they are the same. So what should I do? Subtract to minus, right? Minus what? Two ohm times the current. What's the current in R2? I2. How I know? That's I2. I2 is going in this old branch. 
Now I move. Uh, let's go ahead and move uh, uh, towards R3. Uh, what, what, what do you face? The first polarity you face? Positive or negative? Positive. Is the same polarity I started with? Yes. This positive connected to the positive. So what should you do? Add or subtract? Subtract, that's right. So I'll say minus R3 is equal 4 ohm times the current, which is equal. What's the current in R3 uh, in 4 ohm? What is the current in, 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 uh, in R3? Is it I1 or I2 or I3? I1, I2, or I3? In R3. I3, that's right. How do I know that? Because that's I3. And I3 coming from here. So surely coming from here, right? So R uh, minus R minus 4 times R3. Let's continue. I'm moving that. Then I'm... I'm, I'm I'm moving with the uh, in the direction, not with the current. I'm moving in clockwise direction. You choose direction. It doesn't have to be the current. Clock or anti clock. I usually use clockwise direction. So when I move in clockwise direction, then what? What I face here? Negative or positive? Negative. Is the negative the same as positive or different? Different. So you add or subtract? Add. You add the different, right? So I say plus two. Continue. When you move, okay, you are done. You, you you reach the the beginning. So what you, what's it going to do? That's equal to zero. Now let's reduce it. Negative two i two, negative four i three, and you have four and two plus six equals zero. Put the constant on the right hand side. So you have negative two i two, negative four i three equal negative six. So that's equation two. So you did the two loops. How many equations do we have? Two. How many unknowns do we have? Three, I1, I2, I3. Can you, can you, can you use two equations to solve three unknowns? No. To find unique solution, what should you do? The number of equations should be equal to the number of unknowns. So we are missing one equation, right? Who can tell me how can we get the third equation? Look at the circuit here. We've got two equations, two loop equations, right? And how many variables? We have I1, I2, I3. So we need one more equation to solve the system of equations. Anybody can tell me what is the third equation or how can we get the third equation to find solution for this problem? We treat E1, E2 in series. Like you will, you will have, uh, you will have the same equation uh, because when you when E1 and E2, all this voltage, we just uh, treated all of them together in uh, two loop equations using Kirchhoff voltage law. Can you see any relationship? Missing here that will complete the picture here. Yeah. What about the currents? There is no relationship between the currents. Can you see any relationship between the currents? If there is any relationship between or among this uh, currents, I1, I2, I3, Yes, look at this note. What is the current in this I1? I1. So I1 here, right? The current I1 here, when it when it comes to the node here, and this current I2 and this current I3. So not just to make it big mass here. At this node. I'm going to look at this note. Because when you apply Kirchhoff Volts law, you got to apply Kirchhoff current law too. Where you apply Kirchhoff Volts law to the independent loops, you apply Kirchhoff current law in each node or junction 
where the current meets. So I will take uh, uh, just this note. This junction that I just got it there, uh, I want to know the current in, 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 the, 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 uh, around this junction. All right. When, you, when I go back to the circuit here, in, in this junction or this node C, the I1 going in this direction. So I1 entering from left to right. So I will say, okay, I, I don't have to go far here. So just uh, I will just sketch to you. That's the node C. So the current here entering is I1, right? What about this branch? This branch, there is current, another current I2 getting in the node C, right? So I will say there's current here entering the node C. What about in this direction, this branch coming out I3 that was assumed before? So I'll say that coming out I3. What do you know about Kirchhoff current law? Kirchhoff current law says the sum of the current is equal to zero. Sum of the current equals zero. It can be written different way. The sum of the in current is equal to the sum of the out current. So you can use this or that, whatever you feel comfortable. I like the sum in equal to the sum out. So let me take this uh, part here. So now I, I can write Kirchhoff uh, current law. So Kirchhoff current law uh, in uh, node C. The in current is I1 and I2. So I1 plus I2, that's the in, equal the sum of the out current, which is I3. If you want to write this equation, just the all variables on the left-hand side and constant on the right-hand side, so you can write I1 plus I2 minus I3 is equal to zero. And you got your third equation. Now we have the equation and we got to solve. Let me get all equation about it there. Uh, that's equation number one that we got here. Um, that's one. And we need the second equation. Yes, the second equation. So I got the three equation here together. So do we understand how we got the equations? Good, what's coming now is math, how I solve uh, the equation. I will tell you about the easy way using the calculator if you have. And then we'll 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 uh, we'll have different uh, method where I can explain uh, next time. But I want to solve this equation, so it's very important to rearrange the equations in order. What does it mean? What do I mean by this? It means if you choose the first variable i one, i two, i three, you put the three equations in the same order. Let me show you. For example, I say i one. It's the first element. When you look at equation number one. So it's a negative two. So you have negative two, I1. And the second variable is I2. So plus two, I2. The third is I3, but you do not have I3. So what should you do? Say plus zero, I3. Write it down and put zero if you don't have. Equal negative two. And I'll write this as the first equation. I didn't change anything. Just I'm trying to keep everything in order. Second equation, what is the value of I1? That you see here. Do you have any I1? No. So what should I do? Zero I1. Zero I1. I2, negative, negative two I2. So I say negative two I2. Negative four I3 equal negative six. That's the second equation. The third equation, 
I1 plus I2 minus I3 is equal zero. So I1 plus I2 minus I3 equal zero. To solve this set of equation, I'm going to show you how to do it by calculator. Then I will show you uh, 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 next time something called Kramer's rule or ma uh, matrix form. But it's easy to do it by the calculator. So how, what what should I do? What should you do? Put this this equation in a matrix form. So and you say I put here the coefficient of i one. And here the coefficient of I2, and that's the coefficient of I3. Just to agree about that. And you will say, I will have the variable uh, in order I1, I2, I3. And you put here the constant values. Let's see. The first equation, I'm writing every uh, single equation in a matrix form. I1, the coefficient is negative 2, I put negative 2. I2, I'm looking at equation number one uh, now only. I2 multiplied by, by positive two, I3 is zero, and the constant is negative two. I finish the first equation in the matrix form. Let's do the second. The second, can you tell me the second row? Zero. zero. Negative two, negative four, negative six, right? The last one, 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 Negative one, zero. So it's very important to be precise when you solve these equations because any single mistake when you solve it, just you'll get the wrong answer. One wrong number. You got to be really very careful. How I do that? I'm going to use my simple uh, uh, calculator, not program or anything like very simple. I go to the mood. I, I go to the mood. And by the way, you can do it by MATLAB. I'm going to show you next time I do also MATLAB. And then I choose equations. From mood, I choose equation. Uh, maybe you will have it in, uh, in your calculator different, but you go to equation. I go to question, I have number five in equation. Then you got many options equation. <coughs> I have three variables. So I choose the equation that has three variables, tell me an x plus bn y, it's just three, three variables. I choose, and, and I have it in my code number two, I press number two. Then it, it show me in my calculator here the, the, the matrix I'm going to, so I'm going to enter the numbers, negative two, and positive two, zero, negative two, enter, second row, zero, Negative two. You got to review this when you go home. Maybe I I, I did uh, error or mistake. One. One. Negative one. Zero. Then I press enter. So I got the first one, 1 1.2. So I1 is equal 1.2 M. That's the first answer. And I2, just it, it's very easy. 0.2. M, and I, I think they are correct. That's I3, uh, 7 or 5, 1.4 M. So I got the answer here for the current. If it's required to find any voltage, it's very easy. How? I will just show you one example. How to find the voltage across any, uh, let, let's say that. Let's see, I'm interested to find the voltage across R3 for ohm. What is the voltage across R3 with this polarity given? That's the voltage across R3. I multiply the current in this resistance, which is I3 times R3, right? So the voltage, that's an example. The voltage across the resistance R3 is equal R3 times R3. R3, it was equal 4 ohm, and I3, I got it here, is equal 1.4. By the way, you may find the answer is negative current. That's okay. It doesn't have to be all positive. When you get everything positive, it means that the, my estimation for the current direction was right. If you have negative, it means that it should be flipped, but it's okay. So I multiply it for times 1.4 is equal 5.6 voltage. You can find any 
uh, voltage and any current. I want to make sure that you understand everything. So you have uh, like uh, 20 minutes. I will give you your practice to work on it. And you can ask any question. And make sure you, 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 you give it to me in the end of the class. And he'd like to leave you because sometimes it's hard to write the type of chapter. For simplicity, uh, I assume the current to you, but some problems that the current you have, so not to assume the current to you with this problem. 